So um, Travis Dermott signs for $10,000 less than he was making last year. I thought it was more. $10,000 more than he was making last year. <laughs> 10000 bucks. Now, $10,000 raise. Pretty sweet. Or reduction. Like in NHL terms, who cares? It doesn't matter. However, uh, let's talk about the fact that Travis Dermott signed for a lot less than everybody thought. Like, if you looked at the projections, and I believe James Myrtle and Jonas Siegel did a – and this was pre-pandemic, so it's not exactly fair to bring this up. I'm not, I'm not trying to cold take them here. But they were talking about what a Travis Dermick ex- extension might look like. And reasonably, at that point in the season, everybody's like, yeah, one and a half million a season, right? Well, especially with term. Yes. And that would not have been a crazy amount. Nobody's going to no. be like, wow, an NHL defense for one and a half million bucks who's young? Sounds pretty good to me. Yep. Um, and, and Travis didn't have the best season last year, but he's not a slouch either. Uh, there's a lot of skill there. There's a lot that he can put together. Now, Steve, hang on to that take, guys. I know where you're going with it. And I want to set you up for it, but I don't know if you this. do. Well, no, no. I know that you want, I know where you want to go on that topic. Okay. What I want to say is, or to, to set this up properly, I think, I think that the, the idea that Kyle Dubas can't negotiate well I think that has been put to rest this off season. No. And the idea, I don't know if the idea. I agree with Jesse. Yeah, if, no. I think the idea that. You're already wrong, Adam. Okay, cool. That's fine. <laughs> well, this is where we're going. I'm kidding. The idea that this guy can't negotiate a contract. I mean, if you look at outside of um, Alex Kerfoot, the Leafs have no middle class. He's the only one in the middle class. In the forwards, in the defense, I guess, you know, the defense is high end is 5.25. Well, well, where, where does the middle class for um, AAV begin? I think it's about three, three and a half. I I would agree with that. And then it would probably go to six, right? Three to six or three to five. I would say that. So if you're talking about forwards, there isn't, and, and Kyle Dubas made, made this point in the press conference too. If you're looking at bad contracts, the Leafs don't have one. There's not a contract on that team where you're like, you're not getting fair value for your, for your product. You could argue that Mitch Marner, a lot of people th- still think William Nylander makes 10 million bucks for some reason. I don't know why. Um, you can argue that, uh, that, that Mitch Marner maybe didn't live up to the contract in the way that you were hoping last year. I, I heard, I was listening to a radio station in Toronto and uh, uh, somebody Mitch, was saying, I'm not going to say, I mean, there's only two. <laughs> Uh, it must have been a pirate radio station but anyway they said uh they they said that they somebody suggested that austin matthews wasn't worth the money and i thought okay (laughs) this is what you see what i'm saying but the reality is the leafs don't really have bad contracts even if you were to look at the mitch martyr contract and say he underperformed our expectations we expected him to be a hundred point player which is not unfair uh the guy he would have been huh probably would have if he didn't miss time he would have been well so what I want to say is, I don't, I don't think that you can logically say that a team's general manager is a bad negotiator when they don't have a bad contract on the books. Well, it's, listen, like Kyle Dubas's performance over the last few weeks does not cancel out the Neilander, Matthews, Marner, blah, 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 blah. But the point does stand that, like, at least their expensive players are good. You know what I mean? Some teams have guys where you're like, I don't, I, can this guy play? This guy's making eight something, nine, 10, 11. Can this guy play? I'm not sure. Matthews, Tavares, Marner, Nylander, they can all play guys. They can all play. They're all really good players. Now, j- just because all those contracts or uh, yeah, all those contracts, you know, they still apply those negotiations happen, flaws and all. Doesn't mean that he didn't do an incredible job with, you can only perform in the moment you're in, Mm -hmm. right? And you could, well, anyone could be a great negotiator in a pandemic. Listen, those are the cards he was dealt, the cards everyone was dealt, and he did a masterful job. Has done a masterful job. There's one more contract to go with Joey Anderson getting re-signed, and then we got to figure out how the team gets cap compliant. There's a number and of the, options. And the thing with Joey Anderson with that's interesting is that he has no cards. Like, he has nothing. None. Like, it's, do you want to play, or, or do you want to go to Europe? 
the like i mean you speak to his agents and or like maybe you get i don't know how it works you get your contract demands in an email or like a text and then you have the, the second blackberry at this point though you, uh uh you know dubas i think he might have worked his way up to three well, was three. there three I, I remember there being as much as There's, as many as six. I think it, it's six is your total you can unlock. Yeah. Whoa. I never yeah. unlocked. I Adam, think I, I got past three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was always but, disappointing, though. It's like Florida offered you a fourth for your two fifths. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. that's not why I got the six. You, you never accept the deals that they'd send you through your Blackberry. You'd always at least negotiate. You'd always send something back because you can always you uh, like yeah. add a draft pick or something. And they might accept that, but never accept the offer they send. Right. In NHL so, 2010, if you ever play it, everybody out there. <laughs> so Dubas on his third Blackberry, perhaps, um, you know, my client, Joey Anderson, wants $750,000. And you go, okay. And then you have a phone call. Yes. Hi, I understand you would like to make more than Joe Thornton. And my question is why? <laughs> my question is based on what? So I understand. No, sorry. I understand you would like to make more money than both Joe Thornton and Jason Spezza. And I would, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because um, that not- puts pressure on the group, does it not? It's it's not even like okay if those imagine, two hadn't signed those. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no 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 no. Go ahead, finish your point, and then I'm going to come back with you. Something. If else. those two hadn't signed those, it's still a guy who played, I think, 18 NHL games last season, which is a career high, um, in a time where there is no bloody money, and we're in. You're in it. You are in it. If you don't have a contract right now, this is essentially August. And it came that quick. It was fast. It was very fast. What free agency opened October 9th. We are not yet in November. We're like two weeks out. We can from we, free agency. We, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 From free agency. Yeah. Right? Yep. The, the beginning of it. And we're already in arbitration cases and guys have uh, settled. We, that's usually like we're in it. If you don't have a deal, I don't care how good you are. Mike Hoffman could Mike Hoffman at $5 million, for example, is a wonderful deal. The guy averages, you know, flaws and all they talk, they talk about his underlying numbers flaws and all the guy averages 28 goals a season to so get can tw- afford to give him that. No, practically nobody, practically nobody. There are a handful of teams that have, the cap space, um, but they don't have. They the have internal money. budgets, right? Yeah, yeah. It'd be, you know, it'd be really interesting. Duclair going back to Ottawa, and also Mike Hoffman. Um, yeah. I don't know if that'll necessarily happen. And and Hoffman, I say because he's the biggest name remaining. I would say, but there, you look at the list of guys available. Sammy Vatnin is yeah. a right-handed defenseman. No one wants that. Nobody wants that. We're in a well. You need a power. He's a power play specialist too, right? So you got to have that that need for that particular type. Uh, you know, Detroit and these are guys with. Sorry to, to finish the point. Which sorry, I yeah. was I was rambling. To finish the point, those are guys with all kinds of cards to play, and they're boned. Like if if you're you know Dermot was smart enough to be like, all right, I would like to stick around, and I know I have to sign at this number to make it happen. So I'll mm-hmm. make it happen. Joey Anderson wants to stick around, have a good shot at playing on the Toronto Maple Leafs this season, playing in the NHL. He's he's going to sign for seven hundred thou, or a few thousand more. It's not going to be much unless there's term. If there's term, that changes everything. But if it's a one year deal, what are you going to do? Now, if I am Detroit, Ottawa, New Jersey, or Los Angeles, even Nashville's in this too because they've got about twelve million dollars free. Assuming that you can spend somewhat some of that remaining cap space. And I think Detroit probably could. I think Los Angeles probably could. The New Jersey ownership ownership situation, although they are a smaller budgeted team, I believe that they've got some pretty rich ownership there. Um, if you can, this is a huge opportunity to sign the Hamannicks, the Vatanins, and the Hoffmans to sweetheart deals, one-year deals, and weaponize your cap space to send those deals to a team going to the playoffs at the deadline. Not only in Detroit, especially, so you're going to the Eiserman team, which I'm already on board for. You're going to Detroit, which has the best arena in the league and the best facilities in the league, bar none. Detroit's the only team with games on right now. 
If you turn on any Swedish hockey league game, <laughs> you're, you're watching a Detroit prospect. <laughs> totally. And they've got all the ice time in the world for you if you're a vet because they don't want these young guys coming in and, and having to play. You, you know, we talked about this with Eric Engels and Chris Johnston about, you know, when Buffalo fire, fired everyone into the sun and then it was like, okay, now we're going to make a culture. And it's, it, it's very hard to do that. So Detroit's going to want to bring those young guys up slowly. They're, the Detroit Red Rings in three years are going to be formidable and scary. But for right oh, now, I don't think it'll be that long. Uh, for right now, what you want to do if you're Detroit and what you want to do with these, if you're these veterans is play in a big, big market like Detroit, big market for hockey. Uh, you want to get as much spotlight on you as possible. You're in the same division as the Montreal Canadiens, Ottawa Senators, and Toronto Maple Leafs and Boston Bruins. And why is that big? Well, they're all big television markets. So you want to be in that, that range where you're marketing yourself properly to teams that might want you at the deadline and want you on a longer term contract next year. If I'm Mike Hoffman, I'm signing in Detroit tomorrow because that, that I know I'm going to get first power play unit minutes all day long. I know that if I've got defensive warts in my game, what are they really going to do? Not play Mike Hoffman. Come on. Like, you know what I mean? That's the, so, so I think that there's a huge opportunity there. Now back to the original point here, because we have gotten off topic, which is what Sorry. we do. That's okay. I think the idea that Kyle Dubas is a bad negotiator uh, could have been true at one point or could have, maybe he was too lax in his negotiation skills. I don't think he was ever a bad negotiator, but I think he felt like he wanted to get, you know, if you look at William Nylander's negotiation, he said, we went too low and we went too hard. Then with Austin, it was sort of like, just get it locked up and done. And then with Mitch, both sides were finally like, what are we fighting over? Like, why are we fighting this? Let's go. And people forget that John Tavares signed in Toronto for $2 million less than he could have gotten in San Jose for seven straight years. And San seven Jose times would two. have been better tax-wise. Better, well. better tax. So he, he yep. took $14 million less to be in Toronto, and it's paying more tax. So there, And obviously the Leafs have, have structured it so that he gets all the bonus money and whatever. I understand all of those points. I think the idea, the old trope about Kyle Dubas being a bad negotiator – bad negotiator, excuse me, is a bad trope. Prove it to me that he's a bad negotiator. Show me one of the bad deals he signed. Well, and like once like, you have, once you have a house, you can decorate it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he need four walls first, right? He's got it. He's got his four walls. If you want to call them that, you know, it's, it's a better nickname than the Muskoka five. <laughs> if you Tavares, Matthews, Marner, and if you want, you can throw Nylander in there, even though he makes way, way, way less uh, than those guys. Um, Riley is a big pillar of the team, but because of his contract length, I don't necessarily think you throw him in there. But he that's a king-sized bed in, in your house. You got your four walls, you got your king size bed, or he's a big ass TV. Whatever it is, he's the nicest appliance you have. And you got him on special. Yeah. Now, but honey, we can't afford to have that. But honey, we can't afford to add a fifth wall. That would be Alex Petrangelo, right? No. So what you do is you get a bunch of nice things. And maybe you go on Facebook Marketplace or you go on Kijiji. Or, ooh, I actually found there's a neat deal. I actually got a gift card for Wayfair. <laughs> and I'm going to pick up a Zach Bogosian and a little Joe Thornton action. And I'm going to, you know what, our old Jason Spets, you know, I'll re-sign him. And, you know, Wayne Simmons is in there. And Jimmy VC, what are you doing on it? That guy, this, they obviously don't know what they're doing, putting this on Facebook Marketplace. Jimmy V, right? So he's got his four walls. Now he can decorate the house. And I think he's he's done a really good job. You know, everyone. Ah, oh, they got slower. They did this. They did that. I mean, what? I isn't this what you asked for? What did you? How could the Leafs have gotten faster from last year? Other than on defense, on defense they absolutely could have. Up front, they couldn't. How could they get faster than the team that they had? Be awfully hard. 